Next crown is not really a crown you want to earn, but it's linked in to the crown of glory. And I just want to show you the, the, how it, it compares to the crown of glory. Look at here in Isaiah 28. Woe to the crown of pride, to the drunkards of Ephraim, whose glorious beauty is as a fading flower, which are on the head of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with wine. Behold, the Lord hath a mighty and strong one, which as a tempest of hail and a destroying storm, as a flood of mighty waters overflowing, shall cast down to the earth with the hand. The crown of pride, the drunkards of Ephraim, shall be trodden under feet, and the glorious beauty which is on the head of the fat valley shall be as a fading flower. And as the hasty fruit before the summer, which when he that looketh upon it seeth, while it is yet in his hand, he eateth it up, in that day shall the Lord of hosts be for a crown of glory, and for a diadem of beauty unto the residue of his people. So we see here the crown of pride. And a couple of things I just want you to note here about the crown of pride, because it's linked in with the crown of glory. You see there in verse 5. Now the crown of pride, how does it differ to the crown of glory? Well, the crown of pride we see here is it's, is it's temporary, isn't it? See how it says, whose glorious beauty is as a fading flower. Now the crown of glory is an eternal crown, isn't it? It's something that you take into eternity with you. But the crown of pride is something that's temporary. Now notice that it is beautiful, isn't it? It says, that to, uh, whose glorious beauty is as a fading flower. So this crown of pride is something that is something that somebody might desire because it is beautiful. It is something that um, people in this world would desire, but it's temporary. Now, what's the problem with the crown of pride? I mean, because when you compare it to the crown of glory, well, it's, it's unrighteousness, isn't it? It's a crown of sinfulness, a crown of bad example, as opposed to the crown of glory, which is a crown of good example and righteousness. And it's interesting that even in this passage, the two are actually contrasted, where it says you've got the crown of pride and then you've got the crown of glory. And I think an interesting thing as well with verse 5, it says, In that day shall the Lord of hosts be for a crown of glory. So remember how I talked about before, us being a crown of glory, you know, our righteousness. But you know, our righteousness is actually Christ's righteousness. So our righteousness is actually the Lord. And that's why it's interesting there in verse 5, it says that the Lord of hosts is actually our crown of glory because it's only through Him that our righteousness is even acceptable in His sight. So we can see um, there that it's beautiful, but it's temporary. We can see that it's a crown of sinfulness as opposed to a crown of righteousness. We see here that, you know, the Lord will cast it down. Uh, where it says here in verse 2, Behold, the Lord hath a mighty and strong one, which as a tempest of hail and a destroying storm, as a flood of mighty waters overflowing, shall cast down to the earth with the hand. So it's a crown that's going to be cast down. Um, now, just on that point of, uh, let's go to Jeremiah 9. Because <laughs> it's interesting here how this crown of glory, um, it links in with uh, the Lord being our crown of glory. Uh, look at what it says here in Jeremiah 9. It says, Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might, let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth, and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. So just in that verse in Isaiah um, 28.5 where it says that the Lord of hosts is our crown of glory. And we see here in Jeremiah 9 that if we are to glory in anything, let us glory in the Lord. And I just wanted to compare this verse, because this verse is actually quoted twice in the New Testament. In 1 Corinthians uh, 1, and I just want to show you how it uh, links in with these, um, uh, with these, uh, these, this glorying in the Lord. It says, For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. 
But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. So that's our 1 Corinthians 1. And let's go to 1 Corinthians 10. And again, so talking about glorying in the Lord. Uh, for we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring, by, measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. But we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God hath distributed to us, a measure to reach even unto you. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reached not unto you. For we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ not boasting of things without our measure, that is, of other men's labours, but having hope when your faith is increased that we shall be enlarged by, your, uh, by you according to our rule abundantly. To preach the gospel in the regions beyond you and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready to our hand, but he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. For not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commended. So again, we see here that... <coughs> Our glory is the Lord. And if we're going to glory in something, then we ought to glor glory in the Lord. Now, a couple of applications for us to consider when it comes to the crown of pride is, you know, service and humility um, are rewarded with glory, aren't they? Service and humility are rewarded with glory. Uh, let's go to Philippians 2. And we'll see uh, when it talks about Jesus Christ. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory, glory of God the Father. So remember we talked about uh, you know, the, being a good, a good example is how you earn this crown of glory. And it's interesting that the opposite of the crown of glory is the crown of pride. And we have this principle in the Bible where if you exalt yourself, then you're going to be abased. You know, God is going to cast down the crown of pride. God is our crown of glory. And we see here that Jesus Christ was a servant. He served. He humbled himself and became obedient, even unto death. And he was exalted. Right? So again, this glory comes from service and humili um, humility. I won't turn to all the passages that I have here, but, you know, uh, Jesus talks about, you know, the kings of this world exercise dominion over each other, but it will not be like that amongst us. He says, the greatest of you shall be servant of all. So again, if you humble yourself and you serve, you'll be exalted um, in the eyes of God. <clears throat> the other verse I just wanted to show you here in Jeremiah 13 That's interesting. It says here in Jeremiah 13, verse 15, Hear ye and give ear, be not proud, for the Lord hath spoken. So again, see here how it's pride, lifting yourself up. Give glory to the Lord your God. See the glorying in the Lord? Because before he caused darkness and before your feet stumble upon the dark mountains, and while ye look for light, he turn it into the shadow of death and make it gross darkness. And look at this. But if you will not hear it, my soul shall weep in secret places for your pride, and mine eye shall weep sore and run down with tears, because the Lord's flock is carried away captives. Say unto the king and to the queen, Humble yourselves, sit down, for your principality shall come down, even the crown of your glory. Now isn't it interesting there that this crown, it's not the crown of glory, but it's the crown of your glory. And the crown of your glory is the crown of pride that's temporary, that's going to be cast down. Um, the crown of your glory is not the crown that you want to wear. It's the crown of glory, which is the Lord's righteousness, glorying in the Lord. So that's the crown of pride. That's uh, linked very closely to the crown of glory.